Hey, don't complain, dude. These things are real lifesavers. Oh yeah, that's the spot. That's the spot. <laughs> Cold Opera for this one featured an exciting new development that had already been completely spoiled by that new eye catch that's been playing for the past few episodes. Oops. Well, anyway, let's check in on the antagonists who were introduced in the last episode and the evil deeds they were planning. Hey, don't judge. I'd kill to have a McDee's in my area for breakfast again. Oh, those hash browns were so good. But yeah, unlike the last episode that ended up focusing more on Aiko than their introductions, they were actually going to contribute to the plot of this episode by attempting their first kidnapping of Hana. And I will admit, I kind of liked the dynamic the flat four were establishing here, with each kind of having a contrasting personality, with the standouts being Fujio, who we will get to know more in this episode, and the OG and Akatsuki. He pretty much acted as the glue that was keeping this team together when half of them were admittedly a little unfocused. Granted, it was a bit of a cover up for his own complacency, but he did have a good excuse in wanting to play a game system that was cruelly denied to us here in the States. Seriously, we missed out on some amazing games for the system, like Digimon. And yes, they could totally get away with featuring the Wonder Swan here, as it was created by Bondi, who also created the toys for the show. On that note, and after mentioning the digital monsters, you could probably guess what we have to put in here, especially considering its anime came out the same year as this one. So, objectively, these were way better, as they actually encouraged us kids to go out and walk in order to digivolve our partners. Yeah, this is how we played back in our day. And we're probably not even that far off the mark, as for what I can tell based off of screenshots I've seen, the pottering call and computer seem to have similar engineering as the D3 and D terminal that came out as a part of the Digimon Adventure 02 merchandise line. And yet the Beast Digivolutions didn't get any representation. <sighs> Typical toy being prejudiced against the furries. Then again, these toys might have had some other similar functionalities, as after Dodo accidentally fell into Doremi's phone, the Ojamajo discovered they could send their fairy partners to the digital world, I mean, into the computer thing, and they digivolve into more human-like forms. However, also like in Digimon, once they got into the computer, they didn't know how to get them out. Hazuki took Hana out so that she wouldn't play with the new toy that she was at least a few years too young to play with. They ended up running into Fujio, who of course acted as a distraction for his teammates. Well, if you're looking for tomatoes, you could always ask your daughter's friend in our universe. But yeah, rather impressively, the Flat 3 managed to take Hana literally under Hazuki's nose. And after coying another Gundam character, Fujio almost left the scene of the crime, but out of pay for taking someone's child right off her hands, he knew at the very, very least he should try to comfort her. With that, Yojamajo ended up splitting up with Hazuki running off with a still apologetic Fujio, while the rest went off with the pottering computer that had been established as a Hana tracker earlier in the episode. Sure enough, it did work, even with the boys having a decent head start on them. Said young wizards ended up passing by Oyaji, who just so happened to be having lunch in the area, and the Oshama show of course assumed he was the culprit. Uh, y'all do remember how it was established in the last episode that he had some new cohorts, right? If Hana's visibly not with Oyaji, isn't it safe to assume that they have her? Maybe you should open up your little tracker just to make sure, especially since he's really not doing anything. I mean, I'm always up for some Oyashi torture. I'm just saying y'all should be playing a little smarter when the toddler is in danger is all. All of that said, yeah, it is fun to see this obnoxious toad get some much-deserved karma after being forced into another laptop. Of course, he was incapable of telling them where exactly Hana was, but did figure out that the Flat Four likely acted on their own. Thus, he did have a bargaining chip over the Ojamajo, who still didn't think to just look at their tracker again and force them to comfort him. And conveniently, the fairies were still in the laptop and in their at least somewhat attractive forms if you're really into albino chicks who talk like Pokemon. 
However, their hand-eye coordination and social skills remained exactly the same, resulting again some good slapstick since it was happening to this little yellow zit. And appropriately for this episode, it ended up being Hazuki's fairy Rere who actually won Oyashi over thanks to her violin playing that resulted in a Ratatouille critic flashback where Oyashi remembered the good old days when he was just a cute little baby. Oh sweet Jesus. Here he is. Oh, yeah. yeah, honestly, I don't know whether or not this was supposed to be a touching moment. All I do know is that I can't take it seriously at all. In any case, it did convince Oyashi to reveal what he knew about his boys being the likely kidnappers. With that, the Oshamasho did what, again, they should have done at the very beginning, and just continued their search, releasing the fairies and Oyaji in the process. The latter, for whatever reason, had his memories of the past few minutes erased because the plot demanded it. Seriously, there was no real reason why only his and not the fairies' memories were erased. Elsewhere, Hatsuki and Fujio were continuing their search. They ran into Masaru, leaning of course to the boys' butting heads. Don't worry, you're going to have a much longer career than his. At the same time, the Flight 2 showed off their competence by the very Neo Jama show with a little puppet show. Realizing that they were going to need a little more juice, they tried to call Hatsuki so that they could perform the magical stage and turn into their Paltorain forms. But I guess she set her phone to vibrate, so they tried to do it without her, and it just kind of worked. Yep, uh, seemingly no repercussions or anything, they were just able to do it with the three of them. Yeah, at this point, things are just kind of happening in this episode. Thankfully, they did at least have one legit good plot point of Hazuki desperately searching for Hana and Fujio suddenly becoming aware of the consequences of his misdeeds. I'll also say, I liked how it was Hazuki's cry here that kind of saved the day, as it woke up Hana and alerted the Ojamasho to her position. It also had the very nice side benefit of forcing them to dump her onto Oyashi, who got even more torture. <laughs> well, that's abstractly horrifying, I think. With that, they defeated the insidious bystander of Oyashi and rescued Hana. And the episode ended with them tying the good use to Hazuki, much to the surprise of Fujio and his grunt that still needs work. <coughs> this was a mostly okay episode with a few head scratchy moments. I will say, I did appreciate how this felt like a much more proper introduction to the Flat Four than the previous episode, and it's even started to develop one of them. Meanwhile, I don't think the titular new forms for the fairies added that much, but at least it didn't take away that much either. Unlike the last episode, this felt relatively more focused. I mean, sure, there were multiple things going on at once, between introducing the Pottering computer, the fairy's digivolved forms, Hana's kidnapping, and Hazuki searching for her. But at least all of that coincided with each other, at least a little, making for a much more coherent story. Granted, it's not perfect, as some plot points were kind of forced, like them interrogating Goyashi, even though a quick peek at their laptop would tell them that Hana's kidnappers were still on the move. It wasn't irritating or anything, and I certainly won't turn down Oyashi torture, it just felt a little forced and inconsistent is all. Fortunately, Hazuki and Fujio's search for Hana was the one thing in this episode I unequivocally liked. It gave us moments where we could really get to see Hazuki's strong sense of responsibility and love for Hana, and in turn, Fujio realizing how much of a little heel he was for helping kidnap someone's child. It's clear they're setting up this character for an arc alongside Akatsuki, who was also pretty good here, when we got to see that he wasn't a tall stick in the bud, and even appreciated underrated game systems. And overall, this was a fine episode, with some good laughs from the Oyaji torture, and a nice start to an arc for one of the antagonists. It was a little inconsistent in areas, but hey, at least they didn't drop full-on plot points like another show that was airing around the same time as this. As always, I hope everyone is having a nice week and staying healthy. Don't be like this old man and catch yourself a summer cold even before summer rolls around. Thankfully, we are starting to catch up with some of our release schedule, and we'll even start doing some interesting new stuff soon. So do look forward to it. Until then though, for for now my friends, and uh... Digimon are approaching. Oh, these guys.